Hello, and welcome to another Let's Play by me, the Gamer Wolf 6 of more Nansu, the original Koya's Root. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can go down to the link in the description where you can download and play it for free. Also, since this is YouTube, we're going to be skipping over any age content we come across, which will be in later episodes. So with that, let's start. And I'm going to say, I'm not looking forward to this episode. Because if I'm not 100% sure if it's on the old series, I had a bunch of videos deleted from it. But this is definitely the day where it does that spooky, scary horror story that has the creepy music and then the jump scare. Ugh, what I do for YouTube. Anyways, let's start. Good thing it's daytime. I wonder what I should do today. Go to Huskies and hear spooky horror stories. Why do they put this in the video game? It serves no purpose to the story. Uh, come on, focus. We have to get through this. On the day near the middle of the month, Koya called me and told me to come over to the sweet store. There's something I want to give you. That's all he said. During the summer, the times Koya called me are few and far between, so I'm a little excited about it. What is this thing he wants to give me? Wink. I was thinking about this and that. I faced the shop in, at the promised time. The entrance was right in front of me now. I walked inside. And there was... Good afternoon. Wait, what? All my childhood friends were there. Three of them were standing by the door. And everything else was... Uh, everyone else was looking for suitable snacks. One, two, three... Yep, looks like it's all... No, wait, scratch that. Someone's missing. That tanuki. Racist. Ah, so dark is the first after all. Well, if we're comparing with Konosuke, it probably would turn out like that. Good grief. I'm that one guy from the anime. Just by comparing, dark's worse. <sighs> really? Um, what's going on? I don't get it, so I asked. In this not particularly large shop interior, there were nine guys, including me. It was a business obstruction, and right now I can't really be it can't really be helped. Things are densely packed either way. I called everyone over. I said the same thing to you, that I that I had something I wanted to give you. Hmm? You did say that. I wasn't expecting so many people to show up. Every time Koya has something to hand out, it's always here. We've all gotten used to it, but it's surprising the first time around. That's true. With the location and number of people. Eh? What? I still don't get what's going on. For now, I do understand that Koya has gathered everyone together. And that's because he has something he wants to hand out, I think. Just what's the thing he's handing out? Well, uh, I'll hand out the stuff now then. Stop making those curious faces. When he said that, everyone looked at the store. Uh, looked this. Everyone around the store looked over and gathered around. Sorry, I'm not good at reading. Also, I'm a bit flustered and tired. <sighs> now, I think you all know why I called you here. But the reason we're here is because there's nowhere else. I was thinking of passing out the tickets, uh, since the show will be in a few will be a few days later. Eh? A live concert? Yeah, I'm in a band now. That's what the concert's about. Didn't I mention it before? Oh yeah, I do remember that. Uh now wait, now that I can't remember without being reminded. My memories really is failing. This is so sad, really. Well, anyway, 
Every time there's a live concert, I pass the tickets out like this. Since you're here, I wouldn't you to see it. I see then. Yeah, in the beginning, it was uh, us who went, who said we wanted tickets anyway. And before we knew it, this became a standard practice. Yes, that's right. When we all want, uh, when we all said we wanted to go to Koya-san's first performance, we all asked for tickets then. And then, every time since then, he would call us over and we would all gather around like this. Yeah, music shows aren't bad. It's a good way to waste time, Dark. Ugh, ouch. Why, why are you always such, saying such thoughtless things? Uh... Can't you say things a bit more tactfully? Wait, Chichi san. If you get all violent in a small shop. No, Chichi san, I was just joking. Just some light sarcasm. Wait, if you use a fist in judo, isn't that vile? Wow. Honestly, I, I can't feel my body anymore. So, so terrible. <laughs> uh gotten used to the pair's exchanges while watching them as I laughed in a dry voice. That one hit seemed pure, pretty serious. Anyway, I hope we leave it all at that and move on. Time for today's subject. I'm counting on you, Shun. Okay, I understand. With a neat reply, Shunkun ran over to the counter at the candy shop and brought back chopsticks in a wooden tube tube was in a cup, was like a cup, and the chopsticks were inside sitting in the bottom. The container was cut in half, giving me the image of Omikuji, those fortune telling strips and shrines. Okay, time to draw. The jangling of the chopsticks being shuffled around filled the store. Seems like it's for picking out the subject. But just what were we picking the subject a subject for? Ikoya, what's the subject for? Right, I haven't explained it to you before. It's like this. We're picking the subject to deal with the cost of tickets. I'll say I'm fine if it's me uh, however many times, but the tickets aren't that cheap. So it's a compromise we all came up with. How's that a compromise? All the thing goes to one person. It's all spread out evenly. I'm for this challenge, and if I lose, I pay for the tickets. That's how it is. Ah, I see. So, in other words, all the chopstick shaking Shunkun is doing right now is a game of some kind. And in this game, there is a loser. Okay, here's today's subject. With a loud declaration, Shunkun pulled up one of the chopsticks, reading out the text written on it. Today's subject is decided by rock, paper, scissors. Oh, that's a good one. Yep, last time at poker, no wait, last time at poker, Koi had one hands down. He beat eight people. That reminds me, wouldn't it be better, wouldn't this be a better method? After the subject was announced, everyone said what they thought it would be. Hey, isn't win against everyone in poker flat out amazing? And if I were to say something, back then, I was pretty good at these kinds of games. But then, if it's video games, then Shunkun is king. So since losing is going to be painful, I'm going to try my best. Go easy on me, Koi. I stopped abruptly. For some reason, Koya seemed so uh, crestfallen. So that... Eh, it's that, huh? Koya? What's wrong? No, it's nothing. Nothing at all. He said it twice, but it's obvious there's something wrong. And what happened? No! How about we start already? Fine, if I- no wait, fine if I go first, Koya? I understand. Let's start. Rock, paper... 
I... I'm never playing rock, paper, scissors ever again. Koi's quiet muttering... Uh, mutterings disappeared into the sounds of the shop. Just from those words, it's clear how the game turned out. That is to say, a complete and epic failure on Koya's part. The opposite of before, eight straight losses. Well, at least it's impossible to get any worse. Hmm, how does the formula go again? Well, having a concrete number would be nice, but relatively speaking, th it's pretty unlikely. However, not one person so much as tried. Most didn't laugh. Everyone looked worried. It's hard to describe the atmosphere, even with Torhaiko staying quiet. He probably gets... He, he probably gets how serious this is. Ah, Koya. This is just a... A coincidence. It's just how the odds play out. Don't worry about it so much. They felt kind of hollow, those words of comfort. Maybe I shouldn't have opened my mouth. I regret it a little. Yeah, that's right. Rock, paper, scissors is all about luck. But with a record of over 200 straight losses, that's probably impossible. Seriously. Yeah, that's right. Huh? Wait, what? I said I just lost more than 200 times in a row. That's one. That's. That last one was your turn. I don't get the significance of the number 200. So, 200. Is 200? Uh, again. And again. I guess you really aren't trying to fool me. Well, yeah. But before you changed schools, do you remember ever losing to me at this game? No, but I can't remember something so trivial. In that case, do you have any strong memories of be of me being in being of me being it to hide and seek? Oh, you do have a lot of those. You're better than anyone in the group, but when it came to being it, I was taken aback by what I was saying. When I look into my memories of Koya being it, it feels like it's turning up quite often. So that means... But but there were times when you weren't it, Koya. You mean every time after the second person that day? Doesn't the first to get caught become it? Uh... Oh, what did I just say? So... It really is 200 consecutive losses. It's been so long since I've played rock, paper, scissors with him that I forgot. From everyone behind me, I could hear them whispering the same thing. Gradually, I saw it the way that Koi said it was. After the losses piled up, I noticed it started counting 200 already. I'm used to losing, but Losing eight in a row with no ties is a first. <sighs> this is just depressing. You can even hear the music playing. Nobody knew, really knew what to say. Not to Koya in such a rarely uh, seen funk. The place was mashed, awash in silence. And then, with the mother of all timing, in came the guy who was late. Afternoon. Oh. I'm last again? You guys really are early as usual. You're just late. None of us bothered with that r routine reply. He seemed to get how delicate the mood was, just as he always did. What happened? Oh, no. It's just that Koya is in his depressed mo mode. Eh? That's pretty unusual. What's wrong? I'm in the middle of eight straight losses. It seems the damage to my soul is huge. Hmm, is that so? Well, whatever. So I guess eight straight losses is about today's ticket to, sh 
uh, distributing. What about the subject? Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, and this time we can have a real contest. Last time, I was done in without putting up a fight. And with that streak, I can probably win. And so, let's do this, Koya. Yeah, let's get this over with. Feels like he's being amazingly casual before the contest. And Koya's been like this before, too. Let's go. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, that sucks, Koya. Now it's nine losses. Jeez. I'm never, ever going to play this again. Once more, he muttered quietly. This is getting painful to watch. Come on. It's not that bad. It's just a loss in rock, paper, scissors. It's not like your life's riding on this. You hesitate too much. Besides, since you put your default strength into other kinds of gambling, it's gonna be bad at this one. Wow, that's unusual for Konosuke to say something that's so serious. Roll D20. <clears throat> Can't tell if it's if this will cheer him up or finish him off. This is a big chance. Yeah, everyone has a weak point. I mean, look how many times you succeeded at uh, things you succeeded at. It's not something as little as tour hike or swimming. I'm gonna have to take a short break here. Okay, back. Hey, wait a minute, Dark. Are you using me as a co uh, comparison? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's just rock, paper, scissors. I'm thinking too much about it. Uh huh. Even though you're, uh, you've lost each game up until now, that doesn't mean the next one is decided for sure. This isn't something to be put down about. Hey. If you're gonna ignore me, I'll st uh, start again. Weren't you all sad? If that's how it is, then take responsibility and deal with it. What are you guys talking about? So, uh, so sometimes I just don't understand the translation, or like sometimes translation's a bit weird. Sometimes like I see a sentence, I say it, but it's saying something else. Since it, it's hard to read all this stuff while, you know trying to keep the pace at a good pace. And then there's like, I understand the sentence, but I don't exactly know what that means. It just seems out of place. Anyways, continuing. Sorry for all the awkward awkwardness there, everyone. I've got no excuses. Dark, is there anything you want? Eh? Me? Hmm. Let's see. Hey, wait. Koya? I want my ticket before that, please. Seems like you might forget at this rate. Ah, no one called? Well, that can't be help. Yep, nothing to it. Right, sorry, sorry. Let's see, yours is... Huh? Where is it? Hey, hey Koya, that gag's not funny. No, I had it for real earlier. It should have been here before. It's gone? Looks like it. Well, if that was there earlier, maybe it dropped into the shop somewhere. Hey, did Konosuke's ticket drop somewhere over here? Uh, there? Nope, not here. I don't see it either. Me neither. It's not here. Not over here either. What? Where did it go? Huh. So it really is gone. My bad, Konosuke. Next time, I'll keep it on me, so please let me go on it. Well, if it is like that, then I don't really mind. But it is weird, disappearing in a shop like that. Yeah, it's not like someone else has it. Ah, I get it. That's it, Dark. What is? I feel like I just heard something incredibly stupid. But with all that waving around, I can't not ask again. 
What's that? The eleventh present still unnoticed by anyone. What she means a ghost has run off with my ticket. Yeah. Earlier there was a strange feeling. Primarily a feeling of talk about it and it will be on your mind. Huh. That that wasn't a good response from any of you. What kind of response were you looking for? Everyone stared at Konosuke. If you're seeing this from the outside, it probably looked amazing. What? It's not like it's impossible. No, it is. Koya spoke to the rest of us. Yeah, what the rest of us were thinking. It's so refreshing to definitely be put to put it down. Nice, Koya. If you didn't do it, nobody else would have. Gah. And you're back to your usual self. What's wrong, everyone? You're making such scary faces. With that, the shopkeeper of the candy store suddenly spoke up. I guess to someone outside the scene, it's a scary matter. What are you all talking about? Oh, it's just that a friend. It's just that a friend. It's just that a friend that should have have a ticket seems to have lost it. Ah, grammar. Snooky over there is saying that the spirit might have taken it. a ticket. You lost a ticket in the store. Yes. It seems we did it until then. We did have it until then. I see. In that case, maybe the spirit really did take it. Eh? Everyone said the same thing when their voices raised all at once. I knew it. I don't know about this I knew it business, but I'm a little interested. What is that? Yes, it's a story from my childhood. So, as to not miss a single word, everyone leaned forward a little. Why are we doing this? A ticket went missing and I could maybe be like, okay, so... Making a joke, the spirit took it. And then the shopkeeper's like, let me tell you a spooky, scary story with spooky, scary music in the background and the jump scare. Heck. And the shopkeeper went on, telling the story dis... It, dis... Inter... Uh, that word. Good thing it's daytime. I think last time I did it, it was at night, and had the lights off. Seems to be a very old story. In Mitsado's elementary school, there was a certain boy. He wasn't from a rare species, just an ordinary boy. He wasn't healthy, just a normal boy in every way. However, he was from an especially poor family in Minnesota Village. Perhaps because of that, despite his normality, he had a certain particular habit. Rather than an action, it was more of a catchphrase. Can I take that? Despite how young he was, he seemed to understand how poor his household was. He would never ask, uh, ask that of things that were important to others. But for unneeded things that were still unusable, uh, he would often say that. Friends, teachers, the adult villagers, everyone really. The boy was always kind to everyone. The ones he asked, they'd often already thought about tossing it away. With no special reason to refuse him, he'd give it to him. After some point, it seemed as, as if everyone began to asking the boy if he wanted everything they threw away. In a way, it was a version of modern day recycling. No one wasn't happy about it, and it was a simple relationship. However, there's a strangely projected on person, with a sudden strangely projected on person, to a certain seed of inevitability. Amongst the boy's classmates, there seemed to be such a child. Thus, several of these unpleasant boys gathered, and several instances of bullying occurred. In this boy's case, he was placed under an unfortunate circumstance. The boy was exposed to many forms of bullying. However, the boy just endured it, never crying for a moment. When the onlookers saw it, this rate of affairs, it seemed as though they thought it couldn't be helped. 
That was con uh, considered a wise decision. And yet, the consequences were far from ideal. As the boys showed no reaction to the bullying, the other children began to steadily escalate their actions. That may be where it all began, the shopkeeper said. But bullying became much more direct, and at least the boy was dealt with it and at last the boy was dealt with a serious injury. From his right eye down to his cheek, there was a great big gash. In such a deep wound, the boy lost his right eye, and his left was and was left with an enormous scar. It seemed that's what the doctor said. However, the medical treatment required money. The boy's family was especially poor in the village, yet they still had something saved up. The boy's parents would use uh, those savings, and one way or another, the boy's wound would be healed. It was a silver lining in the cloud. Yes, that's what everyone who saw the boy thought. He lost his right eye, but he still had his life. However, the boy did not join in on everyone's happiness around him, and has fully embraced the happiness with unhappiness within himself. It wasn't even a few days after the cut was stitched before the boy collapsed from due to a high fever. The doctor examined him, only to realize the gash had become a dangerous weapon of sorts. Bacteria had entered through it. The boy's parents cried as they asked the doctor, Isn't there anything you can do? To that, the doctor replied slowly and calmly, there is a way for this infection. There is an effective medicine. Then our boy will please be calm. To be sure, I found that medicine. However, however, the medicine was expensively priced. As the doctor calmly and cruelly informed the parents, the boy's family was the poorest in the village. Yet, they still had something saved up. But now, it was no longer enough. They frantically did what they could to gather money. They worked from sunup to sundown, as well as asking their acquaintances. Still, even that wasn't enough. Time once waits for no one, and brings all to the same end. And then, on the third day after the boy's collapse, he departed from this world. At his side, as he laid faced up, the boy's apologetic parents only said, We can't do anything about it. And then, it was as if he went to sleep. His family was the poorest in the village. As such, the funeral service was carried out quietly. But according to that family, all of the villagers attended and offered incense. Among them, there was one child who cried in front of the deceased. It was that child, the one who had given him the injury. While the boy was alive, when he asked about the wound, he would just say, I fell by myself. But such a wound would not be sustained from falling. When pressed, the parents and doctor and the boy all insisted that it was just a fall until the end. The poor boy died, and through bullying, realized the weight of his actions. No one had the courage to speak, up, uh, speak to him about to them. So he could only cry before the boy's grave. All the while, apologizing desperately from, fro, from his heart. Even after the service ended, the bully kept on crying. The soul-crushing weight never disappeared. On the contrary, he kept piling up. If he spoke to anyone, he, he would have been conf uh, comfor comforted. <sighs> Sadly, he never found the courage. What if I just died? Before I knew it, he was thinking about it. Then one day the bully saw a boy and saw the boy in a dream. The distance between them was great, and it was also dark, so it was difficult to see the face. But the gash down his face was visible, and it appeared that the boy uh, that was all the boy thought about. Why are you making such a pained face? boy asked, in the same kind tone he used to he used with everyone. Maybe it was because it was a dream, or maybe because it was the one he wronged. Either way, the boy, 
Bully let out everything that he had been that had been bottled up. I'm sorry that I killed you. But I never told it that to anyone. I thought about dying too, and it hurts. I see. The boy whispered quietly, then continued to look on like so. Do you still want to die? Yeah. If it makes me feel better, then dying is okay. I don't want my life anymore. Okay, we're jump scares coming soon. Really, in that case. And then the boy was far who was far away came up close in an instant. And the thing that was reflected in the that was reflected in the bully's uh, raised eye, along with his sinister left was his left eye. Okay, maybe it wasn't that big of a jump scare, but still. Can I take that life and right eye? Eh. I guess if you weren't thinking that there was a jump scare, it might be a bit more jumpy and scary. But just like, why do you have that segment in this thing about dating huskies? Well, you can say the bully woke up there. Opened up with... Opened up to his parents about everything, and lived without further problems. But from then on, but from then on, that boy would often appear in dreams and ask, "Can I take that?" and disappear. Then he'd wake up, and something in reality would actually have disappeared. And that is the story of the village's "I would take it" ghost. The end. As the shopkeeper smiled and laughed, meaning ghost is the one who took it my ticket? I see, then. I didn't know he had that kind of story. If it's the first... It's the first I've heard of it, too. And I've looked so much, too. And you've heard of it, Koya? No, me neither. But, in this case, that can't uh, prob possibly be it, can it? I've never seen anyone like that in my dreams. Ever. Hmm. Well, I don't know if this story is a whole bunch of bullshit. It is a true story or not. But it sounds like a story telling you to treat everything with care. And so, here you are. Ah, isn't this a ticket? It must have been picked up by the wind and blown over there to where I was. If this is something important... Better keep a hold of it. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Saying that, the shopkeeper went back to the counter. So, basically, we were made fun of, weren't we? Maybe. But isn't it alright? Since it's a good lesson? Hmm. I guess so. Anyway, I've got the ticket back. So, it's a follow up from before. I'll treat you to whatever. So pick whatever you want. Yeah, now that you mention it. Tor Heiko, what do you think? <sighs> I know, man, it's supposed to be a dating game with huskies. And other, like, anthros. Heck. Why are you shaking? D d d d d d don't be stupid. Uh, I I I I'm not shaking at all. <laughs> ag, ag, I... I bit my tongue. What's up with you? Seriously. One way or another, another day ended. Even so, is that daytime, uh, daytime ghost story a real thing? No way, right? I mean, there is none of fuse. Uh, spoilers. But you don't see him in this room. So anyways, I'm going to end it here. Sorry that I can't read, and also that I guess I am sick. Because I had to take that break, and I'm going to have to go take another one. But it's okay, because it's the end of this Let's Play. <sighs> Woof. God. So, anyways, yeah. If you're interested in playing this game, link in the description. Download and get it for free. Also, um, yeah, skipping eight cutscenes whenever we get to them, if we do. Also, please comment, because I like comments, and if you like, dislike, tips, tricks, otherwise, if you like my YouTube and like to see it grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out other videos to help it grow, and please remember to spay and or neuter animals to help control the pit population. 
And until next time, let's play by me, the game of six. Of more not to you, the original Quasar. Oh yeah. Did I ever say I'm sorry. I guess I'm really tired and still sick. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, check out the video, spay new channels. Heck. And until next time, let's wait. Bye me. Game of six of this game. Hopefully no more... Oh, there aren't any more scary stories. So thanks and see ya.